Hi, and welcome to the phase two of the Bamni SNOMED integration project. In these series of videos, we will see the implementation for the Bamni SNOMED integrations phase two features. But in order to proceed, uh, let's recap uh, what all features we have already developed in phase one. So as part of Bamni SNOMED phase one project, we have demonstrated the implementation of you know, recording patients data diagnosis in BAMNI using the SNOMED clinical terms. Then uh, CDSS alert in BAMNI on recorded diagnosis and drug interaction. Then reports in BAMNI displaying the power of SNOMED clinical terms where you know, the, we are able to uh, generate reports uh, for any particular diagnosis along with its descendants. Then we have seen uh, the support for the uh, recording chief complaint and you know using SNOMED clinical term and customizing a particular form as per the requirements of the clinic. And the last one is to set up the order procedures which are based on the body sites that can be you know recorded for that patient data. Now, the what we plan for phase two are some of these features. So the first one is uh, generating of the ICD-10 reports uh, based on the SNOMED, uh, given SNOMED code. Second one, uh, being able to export the anonymized uh, patient data for SNOMED's analytical tool. The third one being uh, enhancing our CDSS implementation to include the drug-drug interaction and also cover some part of the alert fatigue as well. And the last one is to implement a very small fire terminology server for very low resource settings. In this video, we will be seeing the first uh, implementation, which is to generate ICD-10 reports based on the SNOMED code mappings. So, what is ICD-10 reporting and what is the purpose of this ICD-10 coding? So ICD-10 coding is a system which was developed by World Health Organization. The WHO requires its member countries uh, to report health indicators and statistics in order to support global health monitoring and surveillance activities. Since the ICD-10 reporting is developed by World Health Organization, so it generally asks for the data from its member countries in the form of ICD-10 codes. Now, SNOMED and ICD-10 code, there is a mapping between the SNOMED and ICD-10 code which exits. Hence, it is it becomes easier if we have that mapping to you know code the SNOMED codes and map it to the corresponding ICD codes for uh, so that the member countries can report their uh, diagnosis to the world health organization so that is the purpose of you know mapping this nomad code to the icd10 reporting so as part of icd10 reporting in bamni nomad en engagement what we have developed is like the clinicians can generate ICD-10 codes for a given SNOMED code. So to map the SNOMED code to an ICD code, we already have a map reference uh, set where it, it uh, contains the mapping from SNOMED to the ICD-10 codes. In order to generate the ICD-10 code for a particular SNOMED code, the system also takes into consideration age and gender of the patient. And based on these predetermined rules, along with the patient age and gender, the target ICD-10 code is mapped to the given SNOMED code. There are certain situations uh, where we will get a one-to-one -one mapping for a particular SNOMED code for ICD-10 code. And there are some situations where we can get more than one ICD-10 codes for a particular SNOMED code based on the predetermined rules. For those ICD-10 codes, the clinician can take an informed decision on which ICD-10 code to map for that particular 
SNOMED code. And these ICD-10 code reports can be generated under the BAMNI reports module that we have implemented. And the system displays the patient information in the form of a line report along with the SNOMED code and its corresponding ICD-10 code. Now, let me take you through the use case for the ICD-10 code. Here, we want to see, uh, we want to report to the World Health Organization of the incidence of the COVID-19 for past three weeks. So let's see how we can record patient data for COVID and report the same in the form of ICD-10 code. So first of all, I will go to the application. Under the clinical module, I will select an active patient. Under consultations tab in diagnosis. So we have earlier seen uh, that uh, the BAMNI reports or the SNOMED reports that we have developed uh, can report the main concept as well as its descendants, right? So in our example, let's take a particular descendant of COVID-19 as a diagnosis. For this, I have kept open the SNOMED CT browser where we can search for any COVID-19 descendants. So let's do that. In this case, we can see that these are the descendants of COVID-19. So let's speak, uh, pick up fever uh, caused by severe acute respiratory syndrome. So I take this name and search it in our diagnosis search. As we have already learned that the search results always provides us the preferred name. So this is the preferred name for the fever caused by SARS-CoV-19. Uh, so I'll Select that and save the same. Right. Now, let's say the clinician wants to report the data for the past three weeks on the incidence of COVID-19 to WHO. So, clinician moves to the reports tab, reports module, provides the start date. and chooses a format to report. Now you can see we have ICD-10 ICD reports for multiple diagnoses and also we have for COVID-19 as well. So I'll run the report. Right. So in this case, we can see that along with the patient's detail and the particular SNOMED code for that diagnosis, we are also getting the ICD corresponding ICD-10 codes. Now, as I previously mentioned that for some ICD-10 codes, there can be situation where, you know, for a particular SNOMED code, we can have multiple ICD-10 codes as well. So fever caused by COVID-19 has multiple ICD-10 codes like U07.1 and R50.9. Similarly, there are some certain one-to-one -one mappings as well. If we see for the COVID-19, we have U07.1. So in this case, this is how the clinician can generate a report for COVID-19 and its respective ICD-10 codes. Now, in order to provide this information to WHO, clinician can choose to download this report in the CSV format. So in this case, in the format, the clinician chooses CSV and reruns the report. Soon, the file gets exported and is now present in the folder. Now let's say if the user wants to do some more analytics on the current file, so they can 
open the same in an Excel or any other format and do some analytics on it. So let's say in my case, uh, the user or the clinician wants to, you know, uh, provide the count of patients having a particular diagnosis along with their SNOMED code. So in our case, uh, we'll first convert the SNOMED code column in the form of a string rather than a number. So I go to format cells and click on text. Now, these SNOMED codes are now converted to text. Now, the clinician wants to run the uh, report or uh, analysis that uh, to provide the count of patients having a particular diagnosis and its SNOMED code. So, here I would introduce a pivot table. And take this SNOMED code in the rows. I'll take the name of the diagnosis as well. And take the patient ID in values. Here, now we are able to see that COVID-19 having the SNOMED code of 8405390 is having a count of patient 3 and similarly sars covid through viremia is having two count of patient so in this way the clinicians can do more analysis and provide more information or insight to the data to the particular organization for it is uh, presenting or preparing the data in our case it can be World Health Organization. Now, the clinicians can take an informed decision on whether to keep both the ICD-10 codes or to report only one ICD-10 code to the organization. So, in this way, we have seen how we can record a particular diagnosis in BAMNI and then create an ICD-10 report out of it and can do some analytics on it and then share the same with the World Health Organization. Now, in our case, we have uh, seen that, you know, based on the age and gender of the patient, there are certain ways how the ICD-10 codes can change, right? So, let me just take you through a particular demo app where we can see that based on the uh, age and gender of the person or the patient, the ICD-10 map code basically changes. So let's say if I take the case of bronchitis. We can see here that there are two rules, right? So if the age of the patient is less than equal to 15 years, the code will be J20 or else if the patient is more than 15 years of age, it is J40. So in this service, we can see that the age of the patient is 35. Hence, J40 has been chosen. Now, let's say I make the patient's age as 10 and refresh it. So we can see now the target is mapped to J20. Right. So this is one of the condition where the ICD-10 code depends on the age of the patient. We have another example for the ICD-10 codes depending on the gender of the patient. So in this case, let me take an example of pelvic peritonitis. In this case, we see that the rule is now based on the gender of the patient, right? In our case, 
दिस पेशेंट इज फीमेल हेंस एन सेवेंटी थ्री डॉट फाइव इज सेलेक्टेड नाउ इफ आई चेंज द जेंडर टू मेल एंड रिफ्रेश इट आई एल बी एबल टू सी दैट नाउ द आई सी डी टेन कोड इज मैप टू के सिक्स फाइव डॉट ओ सो द सेम थिंग हैज बिन डेवलप्ड एंड इम्प्लीमेंटेड इन आर बामनी एज वेल so in our case let's say if i run the snomed diagnosis line report for bronchitis yes here we can see that icd10 codes change based on the date of birth or the age of the patient the age where it is more than 15 the icd10 code is j40 whereas for those patients whose date of birth or age is less than 15 we get an example of j20.9 so in this case we can see how the age of the patient basically determines which icd10 code gets picked up similarly for gender so let's take the example of peritonitis when i run this report here we can see right so based on the gender of the patient right so if the gender is female we see the code as n73.5 whereas for gender male we have this nomad code as k65.0 so in this is how we have developed or implemented the icd10 code mapping for the snomed particular snomed codes so that it takes into account the age and gender of the patient as well in this way the clinician will be able to report any incidence of uh, any uh, diagnosis to the who as per their requirements and based on the timelines so this is all for today's video thank you so much